the joint. Get it? You must be a New Jersey weed man. New Jersey weed. This is the restaurant. This is the menu. We even have a Christie burger. A Chris, like Chris yeah, Christie? Chris Christie. Has Chris Christie been in for one of no, his I haven't, burgers? No, I've haven't, I haven't invited him, but he has For the Christie burger. Yet. Come get a Christie burger. This was presented, it's called a joint legislative resolution, and it was commending me for opening this place in this economically depressed city. It also says, and it's sanctuary, Liberty Bell Temple, which is through that door. The sanctuary that Ed's referring to is the official temple for his cannabis congregation, and it's right next door to his restaurant. For $45 and a quick ceremony, you're given access to Ed's sanctuary to worship ganja whenever you want. If you look around, there's several different religious symbols around. There's one down there on that wall. Basically, anyone who thinks that the herb marijuana is a sacrament, and anyone obviously who believes in a higher power, and when I say a higher power, I'm not only talking about herbs. There are Jewish people who come here, there are Catholic people who come here, and there are Muslim people who come here. I'm not shoving anybody's religion down anybody's throat, and they're coming here. Explain to me what makes you a religious institution versus just a place where people like to hang out and smoke weed. Calling this a sanctuary, whether it's religiously or socially, makes it like a unique place, and you can only describe it as religious. I live around the corner. It's notoriously a rough neighborhood in this town. And like, you know, it's just, it just, it's, it feels good to be able to go just a block away and just chill. This isn't Ed's first cannabis church. He founded the original Liberty Bell Temple in 2008 back in California. He registered it as a Rastafarian temple and listed cannabis as part of his church's sacrament. Claiming marijuana as a religious sacrament has kept Ed in the gray area with the law. So when he came back to New Jersey, Ed was able to do the same thing with the Liberty Bell Temple. The clerks kind of giggled, they snickered about it, but there was no rules saying I couldn't. So I did, I called it a cannabis temple. I didn't hide it from anybody. Since the early 80s, there have been about a dozen of these churches popping up all over the U.S. But in the last few years, they've come under attack. Because regardless of their religious sacrament argument, marijuana is still federally illegal. And in Ed's case, he's not afraid to be very public about his church. This is not a coincidence that you open up your spot, your joint, right across from City Hall, a stone's throw away from the federal courthouse and like three blocks away from the state courthouse. Right. You did this now, on purpose. I did it on purpose. The cannabis consuming community right. should not be hiding in closets anymore. So to me, right here on State Street was like, hey, we've arrived to Main Street. Intimidation still proceeds, but bitch, we out here. Ed's trouble started after cops came by the temple one night telling the group they needed to clear out. Ed argued that he was just peacefully assembling in his church and shouldn't have to leave. After that night, Ed says the police kept harassing him and his customers. They would park their cars right here, they parked them around the corners. They did a good job of successfully intimidating people. How much has your business been affected, like, honestly? 90% drop off. So Ed responded by suing the city of Trenton over religious persecution. A few weeks later, his temple was raided. On April 27th, the Trenton Police Department came here with a search warrant, and they incidentally got some weed. That's it. One of Ed's customers who used to come to the joint agreed to speak with us as long as we kept her identity hidden. What do you do? Um, I'm a paralegal. And you work in this area? Yes. It was said to me that I'm not allowed to come here if I want to keep my job. People have this view that there's like drugs being sold here and that there's like drug dealers here. And there's a lot of violence that happens out here in Trenton. And this is the only place that I've ever came that there's never been any fights. Everything is harmonious. That's something that's definitely healthy for the community. I don't think I have any weed in here. I do need to double check. Oh shoot, I do have weed in here. I don't want you to have it. They're not gonna search me like that. Today is day one in the state's case against Ed for the alleged weed found during the raid on his temple. Weed man knows he broke the law, but that's not his point. He believes the current marijuana laws are wrong and wants the jury to judge the law before they judge him. But if they vote against him, Ed faces more than a decade behind bars. So that's your date, Tuesday, August 23rd. It's a week from Tuesday, 9 o'clock, sir, okay? 
It's absolutely church versus state. If the police came into a church or into a temple and told everybody to get out, we'd all agree that that couldn't be done. But because Ed has his own independent religion, they're not recognizing that. There is no doubt that what's going on at Ed's Weed Sanctuary is technically illegal. But after spending time with his congregation, the Liberty Bell Temple appears to be a safe, positive place in an otherwise rough and dangerous neighborhood. And I had to admire Ed's dedication in the face of serious jail time. Why are you willing to sacrifice yourself for this cause? I'm arguing religious freedom, and I'm arguing that the law is wrong, not I. And we're at the same point in history that, say, in 1929, someone caught violating alcohol laws when they were put on trial, juries routinely said not guilty. And I think we're at that point now with marijuana, that people will reject the law if given the option.